blocking out the other noise, I think, mm -hmm. as far as like what other people think, because people are gonna have their thoughts because they're kind of in the same place you were originally where they don't get it mm -hmm. and they're not going to take the time to get it. They're just going to use their time and energy to kind of judge and question what you're doing. So I think blocking that out, that was like a huge thing for me and like a big, once I did that, it was like a turning point to be like mm -hmm. a more supportive mm -hmm. wife and like understanding and stuff because people don't get it. No, it is what it is. no, and there's always going to be misunderstanding mm -hmm. or misrepresent, you know, and you just have to let that go. Yeah. You'll go crazy if not. All right, so welcome. Welcome to the Wives of the Wolves, otherwise sales known wives. as Sales Wives, <laughs> <laughs> podcast episode number 64. Um, I am Kim Caldwell. I am Maitland Harris. Our husbands don't know that we're here with you today. Yes, they have no idea. Yeah. So, hi, welcome. And um, this entire podcast is really designed just to offer that other side of the picture that you don't see when you hear from Joseph and Tyler. Um, when you hear from them, you see the hustle, you see the motivation, you see them gone and you know Tyler's out constantly videoing and selling policies and talking about those experiences that he's had in the field um, Joseph he's talking about that sales perspective and that global thought process that he has about all of us being in sales what you don't see is the nitty-gritty the behind the scenes stuff it takes because it's a lot of work and it's a whole picture it's not linear it's completely um, global yeah, I think we were just talking before this, and Joseph's been in town 16 days? Yes, it was 16 days yeah, um, this month. And I honestly can't even count. I would even know where to begin with Tyler. But he was gone. He's usually here on the weekends, was gone one weekend this month, I think. So it was probably a lot less than that. So one of the things that I get asked a lot, and I'm sure you do too, is like, how do you, how do, you do it? How do you manage being at home um, and then being gone all the time, and a lot of it is just kind of understanding the why behind it, I guess mm -hmm. is a way to put it. Mm -hmm. um, and Tyler's talked about this before, but at first I did not understand the why. Um, I was totally, especially when he started putting himself out there on social media, I literally wanted to crawl into a hole <laughs> and not come out. Um, <laughs> And it was a struggle. It was a struggle for us in the beginning. Um, the traveling was hard. Even though I'm a very independent person, um, it was still a struggle. And so when he started putting out on social media, especially the numbers, like the money he was making and stuff, I was just like, oh, my God, like this is so bad. It I mean, like I, it was awful. I literally wanted to unfollow my own <laughs> husband from social media. And it kind of got to the point where I probably should have until I started understanding <laughs> the why behind it and the messages that he was getting and that people were actually listening to what he was doing. And so it was, it's hard, but as I think the biggest thing is like communicating. I know obviously with every marriage, but especially in these situations where they're never home, it's, mm -hmm. it's definitely important. That much transparency mm -hmm. is freaking scary. Yes. Like it's terrifying. transparency. Like I almost feel like well, if I were to get another tattoo, it should be something representing transparency mm -hmm. because that is like the picture of growth mm -hmm. of like, hey, we all are kind of a bit of a mess in some way or, or a lot of ways. And it's just a matter of like our husbands are are completely open and free with so much that maybe it's hard to wrestle with to be able to say, OK, well, the whole world just knew that. Like, yeah. The transparency thing is a big deal for us, um, for us as well. And, you know, I was raised more of a, the only thing that matters is what's being presented. So that being the complete opposite of transparency <laughs> <laughs> took a little bit of understanding. And now that I have... My word of the year for 2018 is embrace. And now yeah. that I have embraced that, and I'm like, you know what? 
I'm actually okay with all of my flaws. Like, mm -hmm. I, I would tell anybody anything. Like, I, you know, I don't have these secrets of stuff that it's hard to not be transparent or wonder if Joseph is going to share too much or say too much or anything like that. Because I'm like, well, we're all messed up and that's okay. Yeah. We're all just humans trying to be the best humans that we can be. And, you know, we move forward from there. Um, for me, my big struggle with Joseph being gone was the balance of how to keep us connected and strong and like, like a happy married couple and then still like deal with your issues that come up mm -hmm. and then he leaves. Like that's hard because when you're in the middle of a fight or you got like baggage of your like, all right, gotta hit the road. Yeah. <laughs> oh well it's Sunday at five. I love you. Bye. And you're like, oh my yeah. god, this is pending and hanging out there. Did you guys ever have any of that? Oh yeah. I think with every I mean, marriage is hard anyways, like whether they're here or not, marriage is freaking hard. Mm -hmm. Um and this like adds like a whole new kink to it because if you're frustrated and like Tyler and I have went through this several times Every couple argues, obviously, but like I've been so frustrated sometimes when we're like in the middle of the argument. He's like, all right, I got to walk into this department. And I'm like, OK, well, we'll continue this in six yeah. hours, I guess. Yeah. So it's just like it's a completely different side of it that you kind of just have to embrace. Like you said, it's, mm -hmm. it's hard. but Yeah. So how would you feel like what has changed about your day that he's gone? Like, how do you balance and keep everything spinning and juggling and the baby and now you have this new business and like, how are you doing all that on yeah, your own? I think having a toddler, it's just, <laughs> you stay busy. Like, I feel like at the end of the day, I'm like, what did I just do all day? <laughs> Play with magnetiles? Okay. Um, and it's been a huge adjustment for me too, because I've always worked. Like I've always, always worked. And even before if you had asked me before I quit my job, I'm like, I would have never been a stay at home mom mm -hmm. ever. Like I'm way too like independent. I'm just, no, like I'm not depending on anybody. And that was a huge change for me to go from being working 60, 70 hours a week, traveling all the time to staying at home. But, and it was hard. It was an extremely hard adjustment and it's still a hard adjustment. Um, but I think that Tyler was super supportive of it, which I think makes a huge difference and never made me feel like he was providing for me. Like I, it never like, mm -hmm. it was never anything like that. So, um, you guys are both comfortable in your roles of right. who you were like mm -hmm. one wasn't better or worse or less or more. Right. It was just equal roles. Yeah. But I am also at the point where I'm like, okay, I've got to, I'm ready to get back into the working world. So starting a new business is, it's been a, a struggle because with Tyler, he's like, the, the topic has come up several times where he's like, okay, you're, I'm already gone during the week. So if you're going to go back to work and you're starting a business, you're going to be working just as much as I am. So on the weekends, like it's been hard, like trying to figure out like this, I think it was Thursday or Friday. I was like doing stuff on my computer and it was like nine o'clock and he was like, do you want to watch a movie? And I'm like, no, like I have stuff I need to do. And he's like, okay, well, when are we going to hang out? It's so, like, that's been a new struggle yeah. for us because he's not used to me. I mean, usually when Arden is in bed, I'm like, okay, like That's we can us. hang out. But now it's a completely different, it's a change. So it's going to be, it's an adjustment that mm -hmm. we're just kind of working on. And you that have to figure out a new way, mm -hmm. like the new way. Yeah. It's almost like we were the opposite because when we started, um, the agency was in our house. So we kicked <laughs> out, <laughs> we kicked out our sweet youngest son, the only boy of the group, <laughs> if we have four kids, and kicked him out of his room so that we could have a little office. And it was like the size of basically this table. Like it was just very small. And that's where I'd work every day. And I'd do applications and I'd answer phones and I resolve payments and I do all the like back office stuff. Mm -hmm. And so it like, any given there morning no separating the there was no separating yeah. yeah and so like we never really had us time like if we had a movie that we could watch mm -hmm. that I was sitting on the floor in the living room doing applications and proof and stuff and counting and recording you know and so because I saw like that hurt us like I almost mm -hmm. put a stop on any possible growth because you can be so busy that you never even focus on God what's the What's the nagging, mm -hmm. lurking things that's really eating at me and I'm just going to yep. ignore it with busy Push them to the side, yeah. Yeah. And so when we finally, like, 
kind of got our head out of there and got some clarity and got some like space, I'm like, okay, this is boundary time. Yeah. Like work is going to be at work. Home is going to be at home. And it's a new thing for us. Like it's it took an, a while to get there of how to figure that out. I still think it's hard, like either way to separate. I feel like they're never really going to totally be you're right with who we've married yes especially with tyler like him being on his phone all the time used to absolutely drive me nuts like having a conversation (laughs) or like it never fails every time tj sends him the podcast or daily whatever it is Mm -hmm. i can't keep up but anyways in the (laughs) evenings it's like literally right at when dinner is ready it's like eight o'clock or Uh whatever and he's like I'm like, your dinner's going to get cold. He's like, right, but TJ just sent me this, so I have to edit it, and then I have to get it on Facebook and Instagram, and I'm mm-hmm. like, oh, my gosh. But it's just, like, a way of life. Like, it's yeah. who he is, and literally, and it's so crazy to say, because, like, we always joke that he's just, like, giving the people what they want. But literally, <laughs> like, people are, like, waiting to see that. I mean, like, the messages he gets are, mm-hmm. I mean, it's just insane. I'm like, okay, well, just eat your cold steak. So yeah. my food, so. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, I don't think they'll ever, especially with Joseph and Tyler, I don't think that, the two will ever be you're right separate like completely like and just... like there's so much wisdom in what you just said eat your cold steak mm-hmm. namaste take your, like, ba- take your battles like <laughs> if you want a cold steak i'm not gonna argue yeah. with you to have to have a hot steak because like I'm why would i take steak. that on me yeah. <laughs> i will enjoy my hot steak yeah. <laughs> like i literally <laughs> ate half my salad yesterday and he's still taking a freaking instagram story of his i'm yeah. like what like this is I just so- your salad's gonna be soggy, <laughs> but then I'm like it's not my salad. Like, That's right. Whatever. And that there's so much like I used to try to control, mm-hmm. and I used to control it using like really really fun passive aggressive mm-hmm. ways. Those go over really well yeah. with high powered individuals mm-hmm. like Joe. Yeah, not so like just hitting something head on to be like if I have the the hurt feelings enough to say. I just spent all this time making the steak and it hurts my feelings that you're not going to eat it. Then at least he has a direct approach Mm -hmm. and he can go, you're, I will eat, I will eat it. But 99% of the other times I can be like, this is who I married. He's, he's driven. He's motivated. He's excited about his career choice, his life choice, his business choice. I mean, his brain and Tyler's too, they, they just keep spinning. They never, yeah, ever stop yeah. ever 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 like the stuff that comes out of his mouth I'm like what like I love it where did that just like it's it's crazy like it's and it's so hard to like explain explain to like people around you that mm. like aren't familiar with the environment or and that was one of the things too when he started putting himself out on social media I was like oh my god people are gonna judge the crap out of us mm. like they think we're like these arrogant jack legs <laughs> that are just like putting out like all this stuff out there but it's just you have you eventually get people in your circle that understand mm-hmm. it and support it and get it and that makes like a a huge difference yeah so i think that's like one of the big things is surround yourself with people that understand it like no matter where you're at in life or what you're mm-hmm. doing or what your spouse is doing or and it's so easy to say like support your spouse no matter what but like in the beginning like that was not the case for me like <laughs> I would have probably won worst wife of the year award because um, I just didn't get it but like now that I understand like his why and like he and now that he understands his why I think is like such a big thing too is like he's so passionate about what he does is mm-hmm. that there's really no question in my mind as to like is this what we're supposed to be doing? Is this where we're supposed to be at in life? Like, yeah, there are some times where I'm like, can you please slow down? Like, mm-hmm. we cannot add one more vlog or one more podcast mm-hmm. or one more anything. <laughs> but it's just, it's what he loves to do. And it's mm-hmm. just, yeah. There's, it's almost like there's not a way to control it or to um, yeah. stop it. If we, if we love the men that we married, then there's not a way to fix that or change it. We just want to be um, the very best people we can be and be married to the people that we've selected, basically. I think, how is it hard for you? I couldn't imagine like working with Tyler. Mm. So I love him, just sorry, yeah. but <laughs> I could not imagine. No, people say that all the time because they're like, I could never work with my husband. Yeah. I'd kill him or whatever. Mm. Um, which reminds me of a really funny comic. I wish I could remember him to give him credit, but um, he said, you know why 
God made women less physically strong, less muscles and all of that than men. So because we would kick the ever living shit out of them <laughs> every day. We would beat them <laughs> if we, <laughs> with our yes. emotions and then the strength, it would not be a good combination. Mm -hmm. So, um, <laughs> so sometimes I feel like that. Yeah. Um, when Joe and I started dating, we met in the fall of, um, it was my sophomore year in college, and he immediately, within a couple months, got me a job at the restaurant he was waiting tables at. Um, and we have literally worked together since then. That's Always. We've always worked together. And somehow, we really do good. I mean, it's like, like literally a picture of yin and yang. Like, every way that his brain works, Mine doesn't, mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's Tom opposite. And I like that. yeah. yeah, like there's just so much differences, and because I'm such, a, um, I'm just so even and so like just steady as she goes, just and humming along. Not. And he's not <laughs> that like for me to work with him, he's like I see him as like this mm -hmm. ping pong ball bouncing off, and I'm just like, well, he's he's bouncing off he's the walls, bouncing. and he's bouncing, and I'm just staying here, just. Mm -hmm humming along and doing what I need to do, just plodding, plodding along. And so somehow, I think because we both have such different work styles, yeah. it's um, somehow, yeah, somehow it meshes together. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see that. Yeah, I just, but I feel like Teller and I are very similar too. Like he is very much like, he's so sporadic. Like he'll just like make a decision like that. And I'm like, whoa, mm -hmm. like let's think this through. Like what's going to happen now and then and blah, blah. And he's like, it'll be fine. Just trust me. And I'm like, that's hard. No, no I'm not. So like our personalities are definitely different in that sense. But as far as working together, I just don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's good. I mean, and now you have yeah. your new um, venture. Mm -hmm. So um, it's a whole new thing. So you can be supportive of him, and but still have your own identity and your own excitement and interest yes. about your own path, yes. which I think is really important. It's huge. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Joseph and I have had a couple of come to Jesus meetings in the past come of him, <laughs> of where he's like, "Are you doing what you want to do?" And I so appreciate mm -hmm. him asking that. Like, that's such a valuing question of yeah. me as a person, not like, "Hey." babe, we started this and this is where it took off to and you've come along great for the ride and you've done all this stuff and whatever. But like he wants to know, like, mm -hmm. am I enjoying and, and embracing yeah. what I'm doing now? And I'm like, after like that much thought, I can be like a hundred percent. I love what I do. I love the work that I get to mm -hmm. do. I feel competent and good and it's my thing. Yeah. So it's not where even though him and I work together and, and help build this together, it's not his thing. Right. You know, I have my place and my own person about it. Yeah. I think that'll be huge, this new business, as far as, like, having my own thing. Because <clears throat> it is hard sometimes. Like, I mean, Tyler's just, like, he, he doesn't stop. And so mm -hmm. it's just, like, it's, look at this, watch this, do this, do this. But it's just, like, who, like, he's just Yeah, on. it's a lot. And on <laughs> because he has so much going on like he can't even like get it all out there's so many different <laughs> things going on um but that's just yeah so it'll be good but I was thinking about this earlier as far as like everybody's always selling like even if you're not in sales like I know Joseph and Tyler say that a lot but mm -hmm. I was thinking earlier about like how much negotiating I do during the day with my one and a half year old mm -hmm. <laughs> you're a I mean, pro it's just like constant <laughs> negotiations yeah and I have a seven-year-old nephew and it was so funny because when he was younger we to get him to do things we used to always say but it'll be so fun like do you want to help me clean up these legos but it'll be so fun and so finally <laughs> like one day he called on he's like may will you go outside and play with me and i was like not right now buddy and he's like but it'll but be so <laughs> fun and i was like oh now he's called on yeah but i definitely i mean yeah everybody is selling all day every day whether you realize yeah. it or not i mean 
even being a stay-at-home mom, I mean, I'm constantly, it's, yeah. yeah. It's tremendous. Negotiations all day, every day. <laughs> yeah, it's tremendous. And I mean, there's even that part within not just the kids, but with family, just, with Or Joseph. with my husband, when right. I'm like negotiating on why I need seven more bathing suits. There you go. When I just ordered 20, because <laughs> that's been my new thing lately. <laughs> hey, that's a good thing. <laughs> Gotta negotiate. Po- that's called bo- mm-hmm. positive body image. Yep. I love that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a thing of like, for me with sales with Joseph, it comes down to... Um, what to say, when to say it, Mm -hmm. and how to say it. Because sometimes I'll get so excited when he comes back into town Mm -hmm. that I feel like I'm like, and I just want to, you know. So much to say. So many things. All the words have been kept in, and they all want to come out at Mm -hmm. the same time. And unless I have a half a second of thought about it, that, you know what, Let's not go, because if I say this, it's going to get him back into work mode, yep. or it's going to get, you know, and that is a level of salesmanship to know the dance of communication, mm-hmm. of how to say things, or when to withhold, and in no way would I ever want to be, like, omitting information, but there's wisdom right. in timing. Yes, You know, definitely. if I say... Yeah, I'm going to wait till Monday morning when we're full on work mode to mm-hmm. bring this up. Even though it popped in my head on a Sunday dinner, we're going to pause. Yep. And, you know, there's there's a salesmanship to that. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, with the uh, work that I do, we uh, work with so many different groups of people, whether it's coordinators or whether it's members of policies or it's staff here at the office or, you know, we have all these things. There's sales in knowing how to work and how to just integrate with each of those groups. And some Tyler's, he's gotten way better at it, but like he'll get in this sales mentality that like if we're talking about something, he'll say stuff a certain way and I'm like, I'm not like, uh, you're not selling me anything right now. Like, I'm like, that's no. He's like, I didn't say it like that. Like he doesn't even realize it's just like a, uh, how he like talks every day. Yeah. That's so funny because I'm like, you're not, I'm, yeah, yeah, not yeah. buying a policy from you right now. Like you're not right. selling me anything. Yeah, be real. <laughs> but there's so much of that. Like calling yeah. people out <clears throat> on something mm-hmm. that has been my newest, most favorite like <laughs> thing. Like it's this new venture I've never really learned about, and I've been starting to teach my girls about it. I've been really great at that for you, a while. See, I need to <laughs> hang out with you more, mate. Like that's brilliant. <laughs> Call them out. <laughs> Call things out. I was. Um, here and my daughter went to a um, baseball game and some guy said something and she was like, it wasn't crass or inappropriate. She's 13, but it was, it made her right. uncomfortable. And I said, what did you do? And she goes, well, nothing. I just <laughs> laughed and moved over away. And I was like, no, you call, call out. that out. You say that made me uncomfortable. I said, that's easy words. Yeah identify what it is you feel. So that's sale. Like mm-hmm. you call things out as they are. It's amazing. Like the power of that, oh, yeah, that definitely. I feel when you can actually say that hurt my feelings. Mm-hmm. That made me uncomfortable. That da 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 da. I mean, it's just, yep. um, beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> I think too, like Tyler, um, he's always, and he speaks on this a lot, but like the power of like positivity like mm. being negative and positive and it used to drive me I mean literally I could say anything I would be like oh it looks like it's about to rain he's like don't be negative and I'm like no <laughs> like it actually is like that's a fact like, I like feel it does it thing. is about to rain <laughs> but it is like it's so true and it's been like such a mind shift mm. for me like if the more like positive thoughts you have like the more positive things that are going to come into your life yeah. like he's always said that and I'm like it would literally drive me bananas sometimes. I'm like, no, like that's a fact. Like it's not negative. Like that's just it is what it is. He's like, no, yeah. it's not. It's like all about like how you look at it. And I'm like, that's okay. awesome. No, I get it. That's awesome. Kinda. And that kind of thinking, um, just being able to look at something in that mm-hmm. light, it begets so much gratitude. Like I have yes. never lived in a more thankful place, and. I don't care that I have more things to be thankful for now. The tangible is there, and I am so insanely thankful. But, like, when I walk by, you know, 
like when I okay perfect example when I drive through 385 and 85 the <laughs> cluster up up there with all of this construction that we're dealing with I am not I, thankful for no I actually I look at it and my kids are so tired yeah. of me commenting on it because I'm like look at this expansiveness all of this is drawn out right now on somebody's computer or paper or whatever <laughs> This actually makes sense to somebody, and I marvel at that brain. Yeah. Like, who can come up with these heaps of dirt and like half bridges and roads that are shut down, and it makes sense to them? Because mm -hmm. every time I drive by, I'm like, you see, there's another part of the bridge that's done. Yeah. Somebody drew that. Somebody figured that out. Because I'm like, instead of, and I have a lot of time, because there's a ton of traffic. So I just sit there and look at it. I do not think that when I drive through there. <laughs> Like cussing the entire way through. I'm not marveling the next, at the new patch next, of dirt. <laughs> next time you go. But now I won't. Now it'll pop in your head. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I think that goes back to what we were talking about before, how like my biggest pet peeve is when people say like, you guys are so lucky like uh, that we just like, and kind of like that, like the piles of dirt just appeared there to us when we see them, or the stupid bridge that's causing all the traffic. But it totally goes back and relates to the fact that like, when people say, you're so lucky, I'm like, no, like we did not just wake up one day and we're like, oh wow, look at all these cool things we got. Like this is no. so fun how they just like appeared. Yeah. It's just awesome. Um, no one got to, like Tyler wasn't as, or I don't even know if social, social media probably was as big, but he wasn't as big on it. Um, and so like no one really got to see like the mm -hmm. behind the scenes, you know, like where we started and the struggles that we had. And when we literally like, had no money, none. Um, and so we weren't quite at the point of the stories that you have, but it was still pretty bad. Um, we struggled to get her. And so, like, a lot of people just see that the now, the, mm -hmm. you know, the blessings and stuff that we have now, which I'm very thankful for, but it's just, it kind of goes back to the, when you look at something, like, seeing, like, the entire side of it, like, where it started and where it is now. Like, it had to start from something. It didn't yeah. just up here yeah um so yeah yeah just like the traffic and all that mm -hmm. <laughs> the pad just start from the somewhere piles of dirt that just appeared that's right mm -hmm. that's right yeah it's been a, a huge process and to be able to like so this weekend was my dad's 75th 71st um, birthday so immediately i was like dad your birthday's coming up and he's so good because he knows me and my sister constantly like hammer him for birthday ideas and he's like well Kimber I don't know I, I don't really need another shirt or I don't know you know so, <laughs> and not, I was like I'm done with the socks <laughs> yeah yeah and he was like I said well no 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 dad I, I, I wouldn't need an idea I said what about a dinner and he was like oh what do you what do you mean and I was like well I could come up there and take you to dinner up to Connecticut, or I'll fly you down here, yeah. and we can have a weekend. And he chose to come down here, and he just left like literally an hour ago. And that, um, we walked around here in the office this morning before I took him to the airport, and that perspective he had, like what triggered this whole thought was you saying the beginning and the middle and coming from that place, is he saw us. He owned a grocery store in Connecticut and the only way that Joseph and I had- that they were robbing. And he, Just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> the only way that he had, that we had anything to eat was because at the end of the shift, at the end of the night, at the shift, I would go to his store and I would clear out all the food that he was getting ready to throw away because it had been sitting under like heat lamps and like, Refrigeration. She was all really dumpster day. diving. I really was. And I mean, it was like, and then we'd freeze it all because we knew that the day may not be as good as this one. We got to prepare, like, this is a good day. Like, we got a haul. So we got to go. A haul. <laughs> so we got to freeze. And I mean, that's all Joe and I would eat is the old frozen burgers or hot dogs or whatever that we take out of his store. And he knew it and he saw us through that. And to his credit, he allowed us to struggle, which I think is a big oh, yeah. part of good parenting is like, let your kids figure out their own stuff. But like him walking around today in this office, I'm like, I showed him our map of our coordinators and I was like, the circles mean that, you know, that's an open territory and the name is that somebody's there and there's like a handful of circles. Mm -hmm. And he's like, Cameron, do you see? like? look at what you create. And he's like, that's a lot of books. Why do you have so many books? And I was like, well, that's Tyler's thing. But I was, <laughs> like, 
<laughs> does we don't. The, we don't know. <laughs> we're not sure about that. But just this global, and it was so refreshing to kind of walk back through it with him. Yeah, I think it's a the reflecting part, which I think a lot of people don't do enough, and I know I don't do enough. Like you get caught up in the present, mm. um, but not like looking back on like, oh, this is where we started yeah. and this is where we've come. But I think it's good for people to like see too, like we did not just start here. No. Like it's been a long road. Yeah. Not yeah. quite as long as yours, but. But Still I been wouldn't a change anything. Still been a haul. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wouldn't change a thing. Super thankful for the road. It makes you who you are. And thinking through all of the process from the mm -hmm. beginning and then the middle and the end, like if we look out to, you know, to couples that are in the same kind of situation where their um, spouse is gone, whether it's the husband or the wife or whatever it is, like the spouse is gone and you're at home, how do you rest, like, wrestle with that? Like, how do you get it together? <laughs> I think the biggest thing is, like, get involved. It sounds silly and, like, mm. so simple and, like, something you would, like, yeah, he's your husband, like, be involved. But I think, like, ask questions, like, understand. Because for me, like, I did not understand at the beginning, and, like, that put a huge barrier between us. Um, and so I think, like, just getting involved and staying involved and, that allows you once you're involved and once you understand and once you like ask the questions mm -hmm. you're able to be more and more supportive so i think that was like the biggest thing is like understanding why they're doing this like why asking questions and and constantly asking questions because it's i mean like we said with them they're constantly going and constantly on the move but like constantly understanding like why are you doing this like what, mm -hmm. what's the point behind it and, like once you understand that you're naturally going to become supportive of what they're doing you know i really think the biggest thing for me was a, a sense of confidence and a belief in myself that i can do it mm -hmm. like there's a lot that has to be done if one partner is not there is not there mm -hmm. yeah i mean like you have the house maintenance yeah. things and you have things break and then you have the child care or you have babies getting sick and you have um like for us our kids are ages 10 through 14 she's about to be 15 so there's like onslaught of constant right. Places activities. and activities, and um, and then the communications with the teachers, and the, oh my god, how much screen time have they had today? Mm -hmm. And like all of these pieces, and I realize I gotta own these. Yeah. Like if I didn't believe that I was strong and capable enough to mm -hmm. do it, then I wouldn't have ever even right. ventured. I would have been left a little bit um, powerless waiting in the wind for Joseph to come home. And then when he would, if I had been in that situation, I would have dumped oh, yeah. everything on him. Well, what about this kid? And what about mm -hmm. this sickness? And this was broken in the house. And so now I have a handyman that we love for our house and we yes. call him on speed dial and tell Joseph after it's been fixed. And you Which know, I need his number. Uh, Tyler <laughs> hates doing stuff around the house. He's like putting safety locks on the cabinets because we're a toddler. And he spent like an hour doing four of them. And yesterday he was like, okay, for this future reference, go well. <laughs> can you just call and hire somebody? Because this is not worth my time. I'm mm -hmm. like, you're right. And it's not worth me hearing for an hour how much you hate doing stuff like yeah. this. So you're right. I'll just call somebody. There you time. go. But yeah. There you go. So yeah, I think that's huge. And like blocking out the other noise, I think, mm -hmm. as far as like what other people think, because people are going to have their thoughts because they're kind of in the same place you were originally where they don't get it mm -hmm. and they're not going to take the time to get it. They're just going to use their time and energy to kind of judge and question what you're doing. So I think blocking that out, that was like a huge thing for me and like a big, once I did that, it was like a turning point to be like mm -hmm. a more supportive mm -hmm. wife and like understanding and stuff because people don't get it. No, it is what it is. no, and there's always going to be misunderstanding or misrepresent, you know, and you just have to let that go. Yeah. You'll go crazy if not. Another thing for me that was a really big help was, um, and I kind of spoke to it a little bit earlier, but finding that um, identity, finding my interests, my passions, my loves, because if you have a spouse or a partner who's away mm -hmm. and everything, your entire identity is riding with them, yeah. then it is imbalanced. That's not a healthy right. that's not a healthy equal marriage or partnership. So you really have to know, okay, who am I mm -hmm. and 
what do I love and spend love time yeah. yeah spend time exploring that and then you know what's so great is like I love sharing that it's like this new thing to mm-hmm. share with Joseph right. when he gets home then I'm like oh my god look at this new yoga pose I just figured out how to do it. Ah, I got my head behind my you know like <laughs> I can do a headstand now. Ah! <laughs> so, you know, and sharing it instead of just be like, well, what did you do? Mm-hmm. What, what did you, you know? You know, and it, it's, that is not a healthy yeah, distributorship. No, yeah. Finding something that you're passionate about. Is yeah. Huge. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. God, we've, I've, I've enjoyed this. Yes, I, have I think really... it's been good. And I think it's been good for everybody else, too, to kind of see the other side. Yeah. So thank you. So I hope everybody has enjoyed it. Um, you know, we just wanted to offer the behind the scenes, like Mate said, the other side to, um, what you see with Tyler and Joseph, um, on a weekly basis. Um, like we said, it is a global picture. You know, it takes us at home. It takes us doing our things to make it all spin. And we're thankful that maybe now we're getting an inkling of how to make things spin. <laughs> it's a constant learning curve, constant process to um, to learn. But we're getting there, and um, you know what else can you do? You just grow a little bit more every day and enjoy the journey as much as you can along the way. Mm-hmm. Try to marvel at big mounds of dirt when you're in traffic. The big things mounds. like that really helps. <laughs> Anyone who lives in Greenville, <laughs> please just drive by and think about the mounds of dirt. <laughs> it's going to ch- totally change your perspective on 385. That's right. That's right. So you're so, welcome for that. <laughs> so this has been episode 64 of the Sales Wolves podcast. Sales Wives. Oh, Sales Wives. Yes. And um, mm-hmm. we're not howling. No, we're not howling. Okay. No. All right. Well, thanks, guys. <laughs>